بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our treaties in our discussion of the book نواقد الإسلام by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى before we get into the text we're still in the introduction to some very important principles we in the previous uh, two durus as this is the third lecture or the third dars or lesson in the series we spoke about the issue of takfir and we mentioned some of the principles related to takfir to declaring another Muslim an apostate and that these are sharia rulings that are legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ijma' uh, as salaf salih Ridwan Allahi alayhim, beginning with the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. So these principles in Qawaid are derived from the ulama of when someone is outside the fold of Islam and uh, what necessitates a person leaving the fold of Islam. And I wanted to, before we get into the actual. Ten uh, nullifiers of Islam that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, I wanted to, to read something which brings about an additional benefit for us. And I want this to be a dars that we benefit from. Not something that's just simply a lecture or simply something that's uh, feel good, but we want it to be beneficial information. So in order to do so, this takes darasa, this takes actual studying these things. So this has caused me uh, and encouraged me to go outside of the text that we uh, are actually studying and to bring in additional benefits from other scholars. So I wanted to uh, read what Sheikh Al-Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the major scholars who was uh, from the Hayat al-Kibar ulama and the Mufti, the former Mufti of Saudi Arabia rahimahullah ta'ala I wanted to bring about some of the benefits that he said in his lessons related to the nullifiers of, uh, of Islam or the Nawaqid al-Islam the Sheikh mentioned just in a very concise uh, statement that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab began his treaties. He said, Call it Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'lam, anna min a'zam nawaqid al-Islam, ashira to nawaqid. So, Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he began his treaties as is the from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to begin the things that you write with uh, with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the most beneficent and the most merciful and as also we find this all throughout the Quran of course Allah tabarak wa taala uh, all throughout the Quran the Bismillah is a part of the Quran and the ulama even differ over this issue but this is not the time nor the place to enter into that discussion and those differences however just for us to be aware of whether bismillah uh, the bismillah bismillah rahman rahim is this uh, the beginning and an actual part of the surah or is this something that we should say uh, and it's not included as a part of the quran so the scholars uh, the fuqaha actually differed over this this particular point but we know it's thabit on the Prophet wasallam that to begin when he uh, began sending out letters in order to give da'wah and call other people to Islam to propagate Islam to the other uh, nations that were present during his time sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he began his risail with bismillah bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful so the shaykh began his treaties beginning in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam by saying bismillah rahman rahim and then he said i'lam in some of the uh, copies of the treaties he said i'lam anna min a'zam Nawaqid al-Islam, Ashra al-Nawaqid. And know that from the greatest 
of the things which nullifies a person's Islam is these ten, is the ten that he's going to mention in his treaties. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Bin Baz said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, about this. So we're going to read what Imam Bin Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, what he said, and then we'll, that will be sufficient for our third dars. Qala uh, Imam Bin Baz, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, هَذِهِ الْعَقِيدَةِ الْإِسْلَامِيَةِ فِيهَا قَوَادِحْ تَقْدَهُ فِيهَا وَنَّوَاقِدْ تَنْقَذُوهَا يَجِبُ نُبَيِّنَهَا وَقَوَادِحْ كِسْمَان So Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, he said this Aqeedat uh, al-Islamiyya, this Islamic creed has those things, uh, there are those things which uh, take away from that creed or to, um, belittle or distort that creed or that, that actually nullify that creed. And he said, there are nawaqid, or there are those things which uh, uh, invalidate those things, uh, a part of this creed. There are those things which nullify this creed. And it is an obligation upon us to clarify them, to clarify them for the, for the ummah. And he said, the ways in which this is violated, meaning the aqidat al-Islamiyya, the creed, Islam, or faith, Iman, the way in which it is violated is of two types. So he mentioned, he said, وَالْقَوَادِحْ kisman. He said, the way in which uh, the creed is violated is of two types. So what is the first type? He said, firstly, kism يَنْقُضُ هَذِهِ wa وَيَبْتُلَهَا وَيَكُنْ صَاحِبُهُ kafirin. So he said the first way uh, in which this creed is violated is in totality. Meaning that there are those things which totally nullify and violate the principles of Aqidah and creed. And meaning that the person who does it, they become a disbeliever. Meaning they have left the fold of Islam. So that is the first type. There's, a, there's uh, those things which violate Tawheed or violate Iman or violate uh, Islam, which totally negate it. Meaning that the person who does it, they become a disbeliever. The second type, the Imam mentioned, وَكِسَمْ يَنْقُسْ هَذِهِ الْعَقِيدَةِ وَيُضَعْفُهَا He said, and then the second type is the type which, uh, which takes away or it... Um, it doesn't invalidate it in totality, it makes it naqs. It be, uh, belittles that aqidah, or it violates that aqidah, however, it does not invalidate it. And it weakens it. So it weakens the creed of Islam. It weakens iman. So that means this, this type is the kind in which someone is not removed from the fold of Islam. So meaning that there are those things which violate Tawheed, they violate Iman, but they don't totally inviolate them. There are things, there's, a, there's a, a portion of sins and deeds and statements which totally negate a person's uh, Islam. And we're going to talk in detail throughout the treaties. And then there's a type of sin not just sin, but a sin that is again maybe shirk. For example, shirk is of two types. There's the major shirk and there's the minor shirk. The major shirk makes a person takes a, post, a person out of the fold of Islam. The minor shirk violates tawheed. It goes against tawheed, but it does not take the person who falls into it out of the fold of Islam. It means they are a major sinner, they've committed the minor shirk, but they have not left the fold of Islam. That's incredibly important for the Muslim to understand that, and that is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Then the Shaykh went on to say, فالنواقد الإسلام هي أمور القولية والعملية والموجبة للردة 
The Sheikh said, then the first uh, qism, the first uh, division that it, when he, he mentioned the two types that we've already previously mentioned, he said the first type, it is the, it is the type of inval, uh, thing which invalidates Tawheed, which totally violates Aqidah and totally invalidates it. And it falsifies it, meaning it falsifies a person's iman. Why? Because it takes them out of the fold of Islam. He said, and the person who does it is a disbeliever. Uh, and so the person who does this falls into this type of kufr, this type of shirk, has become an apostate from the religion of Islam, and that's why it is called naqidin, meaning it is called an invalidator or something that breaks uh, and, and violates. And what does it vi invi uh, violate? It violates iman, it violates Islam. It totally. Uh, uh al Islam. It breaks and it inv and it violates Islam. And he said it is also called mufsidin. You know, something that uh, uh, basically in, a, in something that invalidates something or spoils it is, is another way in which we could uh, discuss it. So this invalidates a person's Islam. And he said, and so. Or therefore, the Nawaqid al-Islam, those things which violate Islam, they are those issues which are statements or deeds which necessitate a, a, a person being an apostate. Meaning a person who falls into that, they have apostated from the religion of Islam. So that lets us know what two benefits. That firstly, that there are things which take us outside the fold of Islam from our statements. We can utter something which can violate our, our Islam and our Iman. And we can do an action which can violate our Islam, our Iman. And from Bab al is things within the heart, meaning uh, and and it, it, it's uh, well known that issues from the heart that if you have a false belief of kufr or disb disbelief in Allah, for example, then you're not a Muslim. You've invalidated what is necessary uh, from the religion to believe. And uh, coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Then the Shaykh, he mentioned so he said uh, uh, the nawaqid or those things which uh, validate uh, one's Islam, it can be through statements, qawlin, or it can be through uh, deeds, through actions, or it can be through one's belief, ittiqadin. وَيُكُونْ shakin. Also he said, also he said, it can also be through having doubt, doubt in the creed. For example, and we're going to talk about it, Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan mentioned some very beneficial statements in his explanation of this book. And one of the things he mentioned, for example, of the, the person who has doubt in their heart and they say, I wonder, is there really a paradise? Is there really a hellfire? This person has doubt. It, that means they doubt the text. They doubt the statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. They, they doubt the Quran. So this person is no longer a Muslim. Why? Because they don't, they, they disbelieve in the hereafter. And we know that's one of the pillars of Iman. As the Prophet wasallam said in the Hadith of Jibreel, after he was asked about Iman, and he said, he said, He said, and it is believing in the day of judgment. So that is an obligation that a Muslim believes in the day of judgment, and that a Muslim believes in all those things which are uh, related to the hereafter and related and mentioned in the text. For example, the paradise and the hellfires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ashab al Yameen was Ashab al Shimal, that Ashab al Yameen, that they'll be in Jannat al Naim, they'll be in the, the paradise and in, in, in full comfort and full uh, bliss. Whereas Ashab al Shimal, the people of the left hand who will receive their, their records in their left hand, that they will be the people of the hellfire. Inna ladina kafru min ahl al kitabi wal mushrikini fi nari jahannam. Verily, those who disbelieve from the Jews and the Christians and the pagans, they will be in the hellfire forever. That's uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Bayna. All throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for us that there is such a thing as the hellfire. So for a Muslim to have doubt in that, that 
that is to doubt their Islam, that is to doubt Allah, and that is to doubt the Nusus, the text, the Quran, which is the speech of Allah, and is to doubt the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Then the Shaykh went on to say, فَكَدْ يُرْتَدَّ الْإِنسَانِ عَنَ الْإِسْلَامِ بِقَوْلٍ يُقُولُهُ أَوْ بِعَمَلٍ يَعْمَلُهُ أَوْ بِعِتِّقَادٍ يَعْتَقِدُهُ أَوْ بِشَقٍ يَطْرَى عَلَيْهِ فَهَذِهِ الْأَمُورِ أَرْبَعَ كُلُّهَا يَأْتِي مِنْهَا النَّاقِدْ الَّذِي يَقْدَعُهُ في العقيدة ويبتلها وقد ذكره أهل العلم في كتبهم وسموه باب حكم مرتد وهو الذي يكفر بعد الإسلام هي. طيب فالشيخ went on to say and this is the last statement we'll mention in this dars. He said, well, no akid yukun kolin wa yukun amalin wa yukun itikadin. So as we mentioned, that those things which violate a person's faith, it can be through statements, it can be through actions, and it can be through belief, through what one's belief. Wa yukun shakkin. And it can be through having doubt, having doubt in, as we mentioned before, doubt in those things which are thabit in the kitab wa sunnah. Uh, and then a person can apostate from Islam through their statements that they say, or from their deeds that they do, or from the belief that they hold, or from doubt that overtakes them. And these four uh, issues, all of them uh, come under the title of naqid, of being something that violates a person's Islam, and being those things which violates uh, aqidah, and falsifies it, or, or violates a person's creed. And the people of knowledge, they have mentioned this in their books, especially the fuqaha, Call, uh, in the chapter entitled Bab Hukum Murtad, the chapter entitled The Ruling for the Apostate. And this refers to the one who has disbelieved after they were a Muslim. That is what it means to apostate. So apostasy is not someone who is just uh, Aslan or originally a disbeliever and they're, they remain in disbelief. For example, someone who believes and worships rocks, cheese, worsh, uh, trees, worships the prophets, alayhim after salatu was salam, worships various things and objects, whether they be Jew, Christian, Hindu, uh, Buddhist, whatever. That is disbelief. They have not entered the fold of Islam. So they are disbelievers. They're not included in this. But this is in reference to what the scholars have entitled in their books, especially the fuqaha in the books of fiqh, you'll find it under every madhab. So there's no difference between uh, the Hanabila, to between the Shafi'iya, between the Malikiya, or between the Ahnaf, those followers of Imam Malik, those followers of Imam Abu Hanifa, those followers of Imam Shafi'i, and those followers of Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah jami'an. So you'll find no difference. You'll find this in the, in the books of all of the, the fuqaha that they mention, the chapter of Ridda, of apostasy. So this is not something that Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab came with, rahimahullah ta'ala. This is not something that the Salaf Asari or the Salafiyun of this time, or the, as the people like to blame and claim that there's a group called the Wahhabis. This is not from any of them, but if you are a follower of Islam, then you will know that there are things, there are statements that can take you out of the fold of Islam, there are actions that can take you out of the fold of Islam, and of course there are beliefs that take you out of the fold of Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.